and I want to explain from scratch how to make a simple self-generative patch. I'm not claiming to be an expert, but I've been uh, experimenting with VCVRAC and I found a few ways that work for me. And I think self-generative patches, that's one of the attractive things about modular synthesis. One of the things I really enjoy doing on VCVRAC. I don't like programming sequencers, coming up with melodies, seeing what work. I like to throw random stuff at it, see what emerges out of the randomness. So I want to show you my process and maybe you can pick up a few tips from that. In case you're wondering why yesterday wasn't my day 20 of my 50 day challenge VCV rec experiments, that was because I had too much work to do and not enough time to play around with VCV rec. So I didn't actually upload anything yesterday. And today at work, I had some time and I was thinking, what can I do? I want something simple, one row, just a handful of modules and share how we can build up a patch that is simple and pleasing. It's musical, but it just works by itself. So before I show you my process with live patching for the first time, I made this little presentation uh, to go over some basics. What's in a sound? If we analyze what a sound is, and we're talking about pitch, how high or low is the note? Length of the note, how long does it last? And if we have more than one note, the rhythm. Of course, you could have a drone with just one note, which I sometimes do, but usually we have more than one, so there will be some kind of rhythm. Is it just a simple one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, which I think gets boring very quickly, or is there some variation in note lengths or times between notes, and is there some kind of rhythm? Then, of course, the next question becomes, how does that translate to modular synthesis? Talking about pitch, we have an oscillator. An oscillator is a module that generates sound. It oscillates, it vibrates, that's what a sound is. But how high or low this sound is, that usually depends on an input, the, which is labeled one volt per octave. So this voltage is generated somewhere else. Often people use sequencers, which of course is perfectly fine. And, and you can set these to generate some kind of melody. Great but we want something self-generative, something more random. So we can use a random source. Okay, but now we get random nodes all over the place. We want not complete wild randomness usually, we want something more controlled randomness. So how can we control this randomness? One thing is we have a module called a quantizer. A quantizer takes in whatever voltage you send into it and will output the closest pitch of the scale that you set it to. Great. So now we get random input translated into nodes in a scale. So, 
we get a melody coming out of our oscillator. But this will be a constant note for most oscillators, so in that case we want to control the length. Now there are some oscillators which will generate a plug sound, which already has this envelope, as we call it. Envelopes can be used for different things, but in this case we're talking about gain, about the volume of the sound. So most envelopes in regular synthesis are ADSRs. The tag at the beginning of the note, decay after the initial beginning and the initial attack, does the note decay a little, then S for sustain, when we hold the note, at what level does it sustain? And finally, the release. And when we release the note, how fast will it die out? There are variations on this, and we could probably spend a whole video talking about that, but that is something for a different time. Okay, so we have an envelope, an envelope generator module that will control the length and the volume of each knot. All right, then the rhythm. Rhythm often comes from a clock. We have different kinds of clocks in VCV rack, but mostly they do the same thing, and they give you a certain BPM, beats per minute. There are other modules that have triggers, uh, maybe not as regular as that. I'll show you the one that I like for this. And uh, you can have sequences that have patterns where they maybe hold certain notes longer than others. There are different possibilities here. Okay, in a schematic, oh no, wait, before we go there, what do we need for self-generated footage? Okay, so we need a clock or a trigger, something, preferably with a random element. Right, because if we just have a clock that will generate our rhythm, we have to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and that's not as interesting, I think. At least that's not usually what I want. So something random. How can we introduce randomness? That's one of our questions. So we need a source of randomness to regulate or introduce variation into that clock or trigger. Then we have the envelope generator, right? The ADSR for our volume envelope. And sometimes this is provided by the oscillator. For example, if you have a plug or something, then fine, then you don't need that separately necessarily. We also need a random voltage source for the pitch which possibly is quantized into a scale. So the easiest source of random voltage is a sample and hold, which I will show you. And usually we want a quantizer to get uh, notes in a scale. Although you don't necessarily need that if you like randomness, it can sound musically interesting to have stuff outside of scale. And then finally, ideally, we want to modulate some of the parameters of the modules that we have. Maybe we want to start with lower nodes and then go into higher nodes, change the range of nodes that we have. Maybe we want some development in the rhythm, we start slow and then add more to the rhythm. Um, also the tone and the quality of the sound. We may want some change in that. The variation is interesting. So for that, we usually have some kind of LFO, which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So it is like an oscillator. It goes up and down or back and forth or whatever, but at a low frequency. All right, so we have our sources, 
that we need. We'll find modules for those and I will end with modulation with introducing more variation. Okay, in a schematic, I put it here, and the main things we are looking for is some kind of cloak or trigger that is then also triggering the envelope which will regulate our gain, our volume. We have a random source for our pitch information, which we usually want quantized, and that we send into our oscillator. And the result of those go into the mixer. And then what's not in the schematic is the modulation. And we want to introduce some variation in various modules at various points of this thing. All right. Let's have a look at VCV rack. Here we go. Oh my goodness, it's empty. Except I have something here. I already have this here, so the audio module for our output. I've set up a very simple mixer master here with a stereo channel and a mono channel. Because I already have an idea of what I want to do. Okay, so we want, we set a clock, right? Clock, you can go on tags, clock. <coughs> Excuse me. And you see, there are a lot of different clocks. Yes, there are a lot of different clocks. Uh, oh, we've seen that one before. What is an LFO doing here? Maybe an LFO can also provide a clock. Wow, this is mental. Um, the clock. Whoa, that looks so complicated. Could be interesting to look into. Um, clock divider, that is prime clock divider. Hmm. So we have a lot of options here. I'm not going to use any of them, but you could. This JW clock is one of my favorites. I'll remove the others. Um, pretty simple. You can set the BPM here. This is the on off button and you have some simple divisions available as well. And just get this into the next module. You're all set. But because we like variation and some randomness, there is a module that I really like. Um, but I'm not going to see it under the clock. I happen to know this is from Valley. It's a sequencer. There's topograph, which is the big one, and that is mu graph which is the same thing, it's just smaller. So this is what I'm going to use. And I want something slow. So let's see how slow can we go? 40. Let's do 42 because I do like Douglas Adams. So we set our clock to 42 beats per minute. All right. Let's introduce some swing and we'll turn these down for reasons I will go into later. Okay, so if this is running, then you will see these light up. This module is um, basically mutable instruments grids which was designed for like drum rhythms right so maybe a kick a snare and a hi-hat or something like that and it has this map so it has a 2d map of rhythms So if you change this, you will get a different kind of rhythm coming out of these. We also have a chaos button, which 
as you can imagine, introduces more randomness, more variation. And it fills a uh, number of triggers uh, per measure, so to say, uh, more. So you get more triggers if you introduce more chaos. And as we can already see, this can be modulated, which is something we like. Um, this also will change how many times uh, this channel triggers. So that's why we, we go a little slower because we want a slow ambient piece. If you want to go wild and fast, then of course you go up there. All right, so now we have a trigger. We still don't hear a thing. We need an oscillator and we need a random source of pitch, right? We need an envelope, we said. Okay, uh, let's start with the envelope. ADSR. There are others you can go and look for envelope generators. Right, envelope generators, and you see, well, again, there's lots of them. I happen to like this book audio that is R uh, because it also has an initial delay before the note starts from the trigger. So we'll connect this trigger to that trigger. See, it's triggering. Great. Uh, and we can switch this from trigger to gate mode, but we'll see when we actually connect it to our mixer how that works. So we'll connect the envelope here to the gain, and we already can see oh, there's something happening there. Maybe a little bit slower attack and a longer release. And uh, once we actually get a note, we can see how that works for us. All right. Oscillator. There we go. Again, we have a lot of choice. Uh, just in case you're wondering, yes, I get all the free modules that I can lay my hands on, and I'll try them all out at one point or another. Although in the future that might just not be possible anymore if we get more and more modules. But for now, I like to have my choice. So I'll try different stuff. Right, you have these chip waves thing. Um, that sounds like that. Right, so now you can already hear the envelope. Do we like this chip chip wave thing? This maybe. Oh. All right. What else do we have? We have the tiny sign. I like this one. It's really tiny. Although zoomed at two hundred percent, it looks a little bigger. And it sounds like this. That's pretty ambient, isn't it? Okay, but we want a random source. And I said a random source, a sample and hold. Hmm. Do we have, yeah, you can, we can go to the tag for sample and holds. Okay. I happen to like this one from Bog Audio, but as you see, there are many more choices. This one also is very small and we'll use the same trigger here so that when the envelope triggers we also trigger a new pitch now we don't 
provide any in source here, which means the sample and hold will just use its internal noise. So we could go from out to this one, and then you get things that are all over the place. So to have it not all over the place, we can use a quantizer. Quantizer. Ah, you see, I already have a couple of favorites start here. And a really simple one that I like is this one. If you have no idea and you don't want to do C minor, like uh, some YouTubers usually fall back on, you can just do randomize. Okay, D Lydian. What does that sound like? In here, out there. Oh, that is very high. I don't like it being that high. What can we do about that? An attenuverter. Okay, what does this do? This takes the signal. And if you put it as here, you get the full signal. But we don't want the full signal. We want the range to be limited. So, hmm. Also, I like lower notes. I haven't heard many low notes yet. So I'm using the offset to have like all the voltages lower. That sounds good. So we get some low notes and some higher notes in the D-Lydian scale going into tiny sine, which is a nice sine wave oscillator. If we want to hear more notes, Then we can do that. Oh, that sounds nice, right? But maybe the sine wave is a bit too simple. So I like using a wave folder. Wave shaper. Hmm. This one from AppleSense is really small and really nice. So Instead of sending that there, we can first send it to You could try different things here, you can randomize Hmm, if it randomizes it always goes to four stages, not six This is um, how much modulation is introduced. I think keeping the symmetry there is nice. Uh, we'll introduce some modulation later. Okay, does this sound good? Sounds pretty good. do we want? We want some modulation, right? We want some modulation. Okay, 
let's do that first. And I'm gonna put that here. So let's look for some LFOs. And as you see, I already have a favorite here, Gaudal, but there are many, many more choices. I like Gaudal because it has many outputs. So you only need this one module to modulate many different things in different ways. Let's get this back here. Okay. And uh, there's a pretty good control over the speed and amplitude. All right. So I want a low speed, low energy and uh, we also want to hit this now and then. Let's do that with the accent from the second channel here. All right, so now Caudal is going, but nothing is being modulated yet. So now this is modulating the fill of this one right with a high fill we get more notes per measure okay. um but we also said we want to modulate these the map and the chaos let's get that there and then uh, maybe this one here how about that Hmm. Now it's really slow, right? Because this is lowering even the low fill we have set here. All right. What else can we modulate? The folding here. We don't want to modulate it too roughly. Let's try this. And now it seems stuck because everything here is down. It will get unstuck soon enough. In the meantime, yes, so we have now a patch which generates tones and with some randomization. But I think there's something missing to the sound. And I want to add some kind of reverb to make it sound wider. So, reverb. Again, here we have many choices. And I happen to like clouds, which is granular delay and reverb. It adds more texture to the sound. So we could just get the texture synthesizer from multiple instruments, but it's kind of a big module and we're going for small here. Oh, that starts swinging, right? So I'm going for uh, the South Pole smoke. So what do we feed this? The output from here goes in here and Yes, I'm old school. I want yellow to be left and red to be right. Okay, we want lots of reverb. We want some feedback, a good spread over the stereo image. Let's go completely wet here.
too much but I would like it to be okay that we need to tame so we're sending it to another attenuator I do think we need to trigger him out here. Just doesn't need to open all the way. And it seems we're stuck here again. Okay, there we go. How about that? I think a freeze now and then would also work. Maybe the feedback. Feedback or the density? Simple one row patch, self generative uh, with some triggers, modulation, and to introduce some variation, a random source of pitch, which is then controlled a bit by this attenuator and quantizer. We have an oscillator here, very simple sine wave, but we fold it a bit, which is also modulated. And then we have an envelope here, and we add some granular delay and reverb from smoke. And that goes into our mixer. And that's our patch for today. I hope you find it useful. And like I said, there are many more possibilities of doing something like this. And then of course you can go into Adding another voice, getting this one is a bit higher, uh, we could go lower, uh, or we could keep this even a bit more high and then add a bass voice. You can add more complexity, more effects, and so on. But this is a start. So I hope you liked it. If you do, then please like the video, subscribe to not miss any of my upcoming videos, and I hopefully see you next time. <laughs>